Now we're going to take a look at digital photo editing to retouch photographs. And the program I'm going to be using is called GIMP. It's got this icon here that you see on the screen. This is a free program. It's uh, open source and you can download it in versions for the PC and for the Mac. Both versions work in a similar way so what I show you now will work in either environment. I'm going to start the program running and it comes up in kind of a funny way with this movable toolbar kind of stuck in the middle of the screen. So I'm going to move that over to the side and you recognize the picture as it existed in its original form. What I'm going to be interested in doing this time before I do any cropping at all there's a couple of things here I want to get rid of and I want to kind of experiment with what I can do with the house. So for starters let's do this. Down here let's explore what we can do with the size of the image. Down here is where we set the percentage of the image that is the percentage of the full size of the image. And this toolbar I'm just going to push down here for the moment. I'm going to try and get rid of this car for starters. I'm going to try and get rid of the tree back here. I'm going to play around and add some additional windows by copying. And I want to get rid of this little pipe here so that it doesn't stick out in such a funny way. Let's start with the car and see what we can do with this. I can borrow some of this color around here using a tool that's here. This is called a clone tool. What it does is create a brush of some size here and it lets me mark where I want to copy from. Now let me just show you how this works. If I put the cursor here and hold the control key and press the left mouse key, I've now marked a spot there and if I now use this can you see what I'm doing here? I'm painting kind of a funny spot on the driveway that's the same color as that. And I wanted to see about what size the brush is. Now if I make the brush bigger, let's do this. The circle gets bigger. Let's do this. The circle gets a little bigger yet. Perhaps too big. Let me go up here and undo what I just did in terms of the coloring I did down here. Let's borrow some of the green, holding the control key down and pressing the left mouse button. That's the point I'm copying from. Now anything that I do copies with a moving point from that point there. So let me make it a little easier to see here. I'm going to increase this so I'm looking at the picture at least at 100% size. And let's take a look at where the car is. I'm going to once again undo what I just did and let's set the place where I want to do the copy from. So I'm in the clone tool. I'm going to go here. I'm going to press the control key and I'll hold down the left mouse button. Now you see there is a little symbol here and the size of the circle here is what I'm copying. Do you see how that symbol is moving? And if I move far enough what gets copied is no longer grass but it's there. Let me undo that and let's see how I might employ this to get rid of this car. Now this is not going to be a very good effect. It will work but it's not going to be as good as if I were particularly careful about it. So for starters I think I'm going to set the point at which I'm copying from here and now I'm just going to go across like this you see when I'm painting out, if I let up on the left mouse button and I push it down again, it starts copying from that point again. So I could borrow some of the same color more than once. And I'm doing kind of a rough job here painting out everything to do with this car on the driveway. Now the driveway is starting to look kind of awful. That's why this is really kind of an art if you were going to try and do a good job of this. And here I've strayed onto the sidewalk, so I've got to fix that up again too. Now I can make the circle bigger here. 
if I wanted to speed things up a little bit, I can go like this. And I think you get the drift. What I'm really doing is replacing the colors within that brush circle with colors that I'm borrowing from the place where that point of origin is. And now, you see, I've sort of painted the car out, but it's very messy. And look at the driveway here. Back here, I think I really need to make the circle smaller so that I don't have such a mess going on. And I'm going to borrow from the white on the door, like this, so that when I do this here, now it's sort of like I'm painting the door so that I'm going to see that more like it really might be behind where the car is. If I wanted to mess with this further, I could actually do a much better job. I'm going to try and get this to the point where it at least looks credible, and I'll have to guess it's about where the bottom of the garage door is at that point. And let's change this origin to there. I might get a little nicer color coming out of it. And if I do something like this, I think you might see that it seems to be sort of hanging together that the door might look like that. And here, I don't know what I'm going to do to restore anything at that point. I can clean up the driveway here by putting this origin point, oh, let's say I'm going to take it from about right here. And now let's put it over here and run back. And it's going to seem like I have some grass over there, but at least it will give the shape of the driveway. And here, let's do something like that. That is kind of a mess. Let me at least cover things up with some bushes here. So if I set the origin point here, now when I go back like this, it looks like I'm planting some bushes all of a sudden. And maybe that makes it look a little bit better going back. Let's suppose I really do like a lot of windows. This window right here, I'm going to try and put one right there just like it. I'm going to go to the center of it, establish the origin point there. Now, where do I want the center of the window here? And let's just go around like this and paint it. And you see what's happening. It's moving the spot where I'm taking it from. And of course, that looks really kind of crummy, but it is a window there, a copy of that window, but the surrounding is very messy. It looks like a very bad paint job. Now, since the origin point is still there, I can come here. And I can do the very same thing if I wanted to put another window. Maybe I'm window crazy, and I want this house to actually have a lot of light coming in. So now I've added another window there. Let's go back out here a little bit and see what this looks like. OK, from a distance, it may not look as bad as it looked close up. Here the driveway. Well, I've gotten rid of the car. And at a glance, it just looks like more bushes along in here. Now, supposing I like the idea of that extra landscaping. Let me move the point of origin here. And then wherever I want the center of a bush, let me do this. And I'm just holding the left mouse button down and copying. And the same shape of bush will come in. This is a clone of that. And perhaps I even wanted to put another one here. So I'm going to move the cursor around like this. And I'm going to paint that in. Not straying too far from around it, but the background here is the same as the background there, more or less. So I could color this up with a number of bushes. Let's go back to our friend the window here. Supposing I once again reestablish the central point of that window as the point of origin. Supposing I wanted a window right here, for some reason on the porch. Well, now I'm filling in a window right there, kind of funny looking, but I'm copying from that point and putting it down here. Very strange. Let's do a little bit with this area here. That is that down spot that kind of sticks out in a funny way. Let me go up here. I'll increase the size of it once again. So I'm going to borrow from this roof. And let me put the point of origin out here. That's where I'm copying from. Now let's just clone this. And this is... If I'm careful, I won't overrun the edge of it by the house. And here I could probably carefully 
although it might be good to make this picture a little bit bigger and maybe I'll make the brush a little bit smaller here so it might make it a little bit easier for me to not mess things up and I could if I wanted to clone more down here but I don't think I'm going to worry about that so that doesn't look too bad I would imagine let's do something with the sky up here I'd like to get rid of this tree out to about here because I'm going to try and eventually crop this picture so that I won't have this street lamp in it and things to the left so let me make the circle a little bit bigger here something like this now let's take from the sky up around here somewhere and I'm going to then start down here and just sort of blot out the tree but you see this really isn't looking too good because the sky that I'm copying from is a slightly different shade than what's surrounding this area here so I'm just doing this in kind of a quick way to give you a general idea and let's say that that chimney really kind of messes things up messes up the line so we'll just take that out too now here it might be a good idea to make the picture a little bit bigger but I'm just going to try and do it this way to get the clouds to replace the trees along that roof line and we see this rather strange formation there that doesn't quite look like a cloud now that I've messed around with it let's go back down to 50 percent well, at a glance once again that isn't too bad one more thing let's fool around with the street light here what I'm going to do at this point and maybe it's better done at a bigger scale again what I'm going to do is make it seem like it's kind of floating in the air so I'm going to change the point of origin to a point right about here notice the center is right at the edge of the sidewalk and maybe I'll make it right about there so if I start at the same point here that line of the sidewalk will continue now I'm just getting rid of the post but I've got a little bit of a copy of it coming in so I'm going to change the origin point to here and take care of that now I really am messing things up a bit with the shadow but let's not worry about that right now let's change the point of origin to that side of the sidewalk and as long as I stick to that side uh oh looks like I made a mistake I didn't really shift the point of origin let's go back undo that and let's this time do hold the control key down and press the mouse button and now I have changed the point of origin so I should be able to do this and maybe if I change that point of origin again entirely on the grass I can now clean you see it's moving closer all the time I don't want to get it too far away change the origin to there and do something like this now I'm copying that inadvertently oh, something here now that's kind of strange if I were to take a look at this from a distance it kind of makes it look like the street lamp has been mounted right here between the houses as opposed to on the sidewalk I could do a nicer job here with the shadow to try and clean that up and I could make the edge of this brush instead of being sharp I could make it kind of uh, fuzzy so that it's easier for me to get these kinds of shadows that have fuzzy edges to them one other thing let's take a look here that's some sort of a sign in the window let's get rid of that here so what I think I might do then is make the brush a little bit smaller establish the point of origin perhaps something like this and then I'm just going to go straight down and I'm going to copy pretty much those shades in exactly the way they are now that came out pretty well it looks very natural because I stayed in the same vertical line I copied from here and here and it looks very natural and when I come back out I'm going to see really it looks like I've done a pretty good job in painting out that little sign let's take a look at cropping this thing here because that's one thing that a real photo editor can do for you also let's see how we might crop this thing in a similar way to what we did before I'm going to designate an area here 
that I would like to crop to. I can adjust that just a bit by going to the corners and doing this. In order to take that and crop everything else away, I go to Image and I say Crop to Selection. And it takes away everything else, leaving what I've got as far as the image goes. I can save this, save as, and I think I'm going to call this just some variation of this, old house cropped with GIMP. And here I even have the possibility of indicating what kind of quality I want for this, which will dictate the size of the JPEG. I'll just leave this as it stood at 95% and I'll save it. Let's leave this program Let's take a look at that picture and let's do a preview on this. And here we have the cropped picture with the changes, the extra windows, having taken out the little sign in the window, having removed this in kind of a messy way, and as much as we can see here, the car is gone. This is what a photo editor can do for you. I would strongly recommend that you explore GIMP. Download the GIMP photo editor for your PC or Mac and explore what all of these functions are. There's an awful lot to explore here and what it does is very similar to any photo editor. If you're interested in exploring a program like this, you really need to play with a lot as well as reading the documentation that's available on the web for it. This photo editor does an awful lot that every other photo editor has to do, except perhaps the photo manager that Microsoft provides with Windows at the present time, it doesn't let you do some of the retouching and a number of other functions. So if you're going to invest time in learning one of these, you're better off learning a tool like this that has a whole variety of functionality built into it. One reason I suggest using this is that it steers you in the direction of open source software that is perfectly adequate, in fact more than adequate, for you to experiment with to learn about these things. Unfortunately, many times people assume that you have to use the Adobe products, which are very fine products. Adobe Photoshop, for example, professional caliber tool. The problem is, for a newcomer, you can get frustrated with a tool like that very easily because it has so much functionality. It's like trying to take a picture with a camera that has many, many settings and you have to set them all manually. Until you get very good at it, you probably will spend a lot of time just looking for things and trying to figure out how to do things. A tool like this that's free might be a whole lot more accessible to you and you can then use it to learn about functions and then when you approach another photo editor, perhaps at your place of work, they might supply Adobe Photoshop, you'll know the kind of functions that you need to look for instead of trying to learn both the functions and where they are on a more complex tool. I think you'd enjoy photo editing. I've had a lot of fun with it. At this point, we'll start focusing on video editing, which is even more fun. Mm -hmm.